Hello everyone, in this video we're going to learn about how while loops can help us write more advanced programs and how we can further control the value of i in for loops. We use if statements to have Python turtle make decisions. But what if that decision isn't a one-time choice? For example, if I encounter failure, I should try again. But what if I encounter failure after failure? Well, I should try again until I succeed in the end. But to use if statements to complete this code, we would need to write many lines of repeating if statements. We may think to use a for loop in this scenario. But in order to use a for loop, I need to know the exact number of times I need to repeat the comments below. If I don't know this value, a for loop can't be used. This is where while loops become useful. We can use a while loop to repeat certain comments as long as the condition remains true. In this case, I will keep trying while I am facing failures. Once I succeed, the condition is false and the code will stop running. To write a while loop, we simply use the word while and follow it by a condition and a colon. The condition is written in the same way we write conditions in if statements. We indent all the comments we want to keep repeating while the condition underneath is true. There is one moment to be cautious of while writing while loops. If we use a condition that never becomes false, we will have created what is called infinite loop. Creating a loop that never ends will cause the program to crash. So make sure you include a stopping point where your condition becomes false. Let's look at how we can use loops in our program. In our first example, we want the turtle to draw squares starting at length 20, where each square's length is 20 pixels larger than the one before. All squares should be centered. We want the circle to stop drawing squares once the last square's length will be less than or equal to 400 pixels. The first thing we want to do is to define two functions, square and move left bottom. We already know how to write a square function. Now let's write move left bottom function. We will call this function before drawing each square to properly position our turtle. So we must go to the left bottom direction for 10 pixels before drawing each square. To do so I will call write 90 command then forward 10. After it I will turn left for 90 degrees to face the right direction again. In the end I will type backward 10 command. I want the turtle to draw squares that get larger so I will use a variable called length to control this. Let's write this after my defined functions. I want the first square to have a length of 20. I want to keep drawing squares until my length variable reaches a value of 400. So I can use a while loop. My condition will be length is less than or equal to 400 because this code will keep running only while the condition is true. So when the length is more than 400 the code will stop. Next in the loop I will call move left bottom and square functions. And I know the length should be increased by 20 on every repetition, so I will write length equals length plus 20. Let's see how this works. Great! And if it's going very slow, you can always change your speed to make it more faster. Now let's change this example a little bit. We want to write a program that will draw squares while a user enters yes and then stops when a user enters no. To write this program we must add one more variable. Let's call this variable response and assign to it yes value. Then we must change the condition. The comments in the loop will be performed while the value of response variable is yes. And we add one more line of code at the end of the loop to avoid having infinite loop which condition is always true. Notice that as long as the user enters yes the code will keep running. Let's check our program. Let's enter yes for the first time and you see it draws a square. Then again let's enter yes one more time and at the end let's enter no. And like you can see everything is fine. Now let's go to the extended loop control. We know that the value of i is counting from 0 to an ending value by once. But can we change this? Yeah, we can have even more control over the value of i by using more parameters. If we just put one value in our foreign range, the turtle by default will start from 0 and counting by 1 up to that value. But what if we want the value of i to increase another way or start out a value other than 0? We can plug these numbers in. The first value we enter is the starting number followed by the ending value and then the amount to increase by on each iteration. 
Let's take a look at the first example we were given and rewrite while loop using these extended parameters. If we take a closer look, we notice that before the while loop we have a starting number called length. In the condition we have a final value of length before our loop ends. And the last comment of the loop increases the value of length by 20. So I can delete the line with length variable and the last line of program. And instead of while length is less than or equal to 400 comment, I will write for length in range 20, 400 and 20. The value of length variable is controlling the length of the squares being drawn. So the first square it draws has a length of 20 and then length increases by 20 and becomes 40. The value of length keeps increasing this way 20, 40, 60, 80 until it reaches 400 when it ends. It's very important that 400 is not included in our loop. So if we wanted to our final square to have a length of 400, we would need to make the ending value greater than 400. So let's just use 401 instead. In the next example, we want to have our turtle draw a square shaped swirl where the turtle moves 10 pixels further after it turns left until it moves forward 500 pixels. Let's start by initiating our loop. Then let's use extended parameters to control the value of i in our loop. I want the turtle to move 10 pixels at first and then 10 pixels further each time. So I can use 10, a number greater than 500 and counting by 10. I want our turtle to move forward for the distance of i. And then I want to turn left for 90 degrees. Let's see if this works. Great. In this lesson we have learned how while loops can be used to repeat code while a condition remains true. We also learned how to change the value of i even further. Look back at the examples we completed to help you solve the next set of Python Turtle challenges. Before we end our lesson, let's solve our last homework together. We should draw a chessboard with n rows and m columns, using three colors to paint it color 1, color 2 and color 3. The length of each square is also given by a user. The results should be centered on the canvas. Now let's go back to code editor. Our program looked this way when we left it. So here we must add two variables. Let's call them columns and color3. Now let's take a look at our draw row function. To draw one row of squares we must know how many squares we should use in this row. Previously we have used rows variable because we have drawn a chessboard with the same sides. But now we want our chessboard to be more flexible. So I will use columns variable instead of rows variable in the draw row function. Also we need to add color3 parameter to this function and add one more condition to if else statement. But what about the move up function? Which variable we should use there? Rows or columns? You can notice that we are using backward command to go back for the length of one row in our move up function. And because we have used columns variable to draw one row, we must use our columns variable one more time in our move up function. I hope that's all. Now let's check it. Let's enter 50 for the lengths, 5 for the rows, 7 for the columns and red, green, blue colors. Like you can see everything is good. So this is our last lesson in this course. During the course we have covered 7 topics and learned how to implement basic commands to draw shapes and figures how to shorten our code using for and while loops, also functions and their parameters. How to make our program more interactive using if else statements, user input and variables. How to implement top-down design to break large problems into more manageable parts and how to make our code more readable using comments. I hope this course was interesting and enjoyable for all of you. At the end of this course, I want to congratulate you on completing my course. We've worked very hard over the past two months. Well done. See you soon.